Welcome back to Unirunner Video Drum Lessons for January 11, 2007. Glad you could tune in. This week I'm going to talk about playing triplets on the drum kit between your hands and your kick drum. And also I'll answer a few viewer emails that I received. Now when you do triplet drum fills, or at least when I do them, a lot of times it sounds something like this. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Uh, so instead of doing alternating hands, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, what you can do is alternate between your kick drum and your hands. Like hit the kick drum on the first note of the triplet, and then the toms or any other drum on the second two, like this. so forth. So you can work that or you can uh, reverse the order or change the order up. Maybe you want to hit the tom first or the two toms first and then the kick drum. Or put the, the uh, kick drum in between or however you choose to do it. So you can incorporate that into fills like this. So you kind of have to decide if you start with the kick drum, uh, then you can end with the kick drum on your, if you're coming down on the downbeat of a measure and hitting the crash cymbal like this. Otherwise, if you start with your hands like this, you notice the kick drum is the last note of the triplet and lots of times if you want to hit the, uh, the downbeat on the crash cymbal, you're going to have to hit the kick drum twice, so you have to do a double stroke like this. I'll get to a few viewer emails. First one's from Sam R.I. says, I'm an aspiring drummer. I've had the pleasure of viewing your instructional drumming podcast. I was amazed, amazed by your teaching methods and the simplicity of them. I recently picked up my sticks and a kit and started to play, and you've helped me understand different concepts and taught me tips and tricks on how to work the kit. I recently came across a drum tab and was reading different note notations like strike the cymbal, loose hi-hat, accent, so forth. He came across, he says, he came, I came across a drag and was wondering what it was. I have no clue. I was wondering if you could do an instructional video explaining what it was how to do it and showing the difference between flams, drags, and accents if there is one. I would be so grateful. God bless. Sam R.I. Well, Sam, thanks for your email and for watching the podcast. Uh, the difference between, well, when you talk about drum tabs, as far as I know, a couple of the main ways of reading drum notation is uh, just regular sheet music. I'll show that on the screen. and Or you can read drum tabs which is kind of the equivalent of guitar tabs. You know, if you're not familiar with sheet music, uh, drum tabs are an alternative to that. So, he wanted to know the difference between flams, drags, and accents. Well, flams uh, are played, I've gone over this before, but I'll do it real quick again, uh, just by playing one stick as a slight, as a grace note in front of another note. So usually I'll separate the sticks a little bit and come up come down at the drum head at the same time with the sticks uh, a, a predetermined e distance apart like this. So a right flam, you have the right stick higher than the left and vice versa with the left flam. Okay, uh, drags are usually, or sometimes they're called roughs, but a lot of times they're called roughs if they just stand alone, uh, if they're played once like this. Uh, but if you play them in a rudiment, lots of times they're called a drag, and basically it's done by playing a double stroke. Like for instance, if I'm going to play a paradiddle, I could play a drag paradiddle by playing two quick double strokes, or one double stroke right before the first note. Or oh, that was a triplet, let me try a paradiddle. Or 
bar triplet. So a drag, it kind of gets its name like a lot of drum rudiments, rudiments from the way it sounds. You're kind of dragging into uh, the triplet. So it comes, it comes in really handy. Uh, an accent is usually just played, uh, like if you're playing rudimental snare drum music, you'll just, you're playing all your notes a regular predetermined volume, you can do an accent just simply most of the time by just bringing your stick up further. So if I'm playing a rhythm like this, I can do accents just by bringing my sticks up. So I'll accent the first note of uh, a set of 16th notes. Next email is from Tony. He says, I just found your site and I've been glued to the podcast videos ever since. Lessons are fantastic. Whilst watching it, it occurred to me that you hold your sticks very differently for, to me. Is, is there a way you could show me how to correctly hold the sticks? I know it's a bit of a lame question, but I've heard a lot of stories about wrist damage from playing incorrectly. Thanks for your help. Uh, any help you can offer. And please keep up your good work. Good work. You're sincerely Tony from the United Kingdom. Thanks a lot, Tony. Appreciate your comments and your question. Uh, I haven't had any problems with wrist injuries, uh, so I guess that's at least some indication that I might be holding the sticks correctly. But I usually hold a match grip and uh, American match grip or French match grip. You end up holding the stick like this with your thumb on the top. And uh, some drummers like Carter Buford are kind of known for holding the sticks like that. A lot of times when I see the thumb directly on top like that, I think of a, a timpani player. Uh, that's a style I was shown one time uh, that's common for timpani players in orchestras. And then the German grip is kind of where you're, you're holding match grip, but your palms are parallel to the floor. The American version, as I was taught, is somewhere in between. So not exactly thumbs on top, not exactly thumbs on the side, kind of an angle. So your fulcrum is between your index finger and your thumb, but if you're tilting it a little bit, you're actually going to have the fulcrum right there somewhere. So it's not exactly just going straight against the thumb like this or straight against the index finger. It's going to be somewhere in the middle there. So that's how I typically hold them. So I end up holding the sticks at about a 90 degree angle from each other on the drum and uh, my elbows are usually out away from my sides a little bit and by using that match grip uh, the American style I'm able to put some wrist into it but also fingers because that's where I get most of the speed is from my fingers because I can hold my hands steady and just get a lot of speed out of my fingers like this so thanks again for your question alright another email I received is from Mark in uh, Ohio. Mark says, uh, he says, I've enjoyed your podcast. I started playing two years ago and have found your openness to share your knowledge refreshing. I'm 47. Wow, that sounds old, he says. This year and I love to bang the drums. I don't ever plan to play out. I just do this for myself. And he goes on. Uh, he also was talking about, he says, when I was a kid, Maybe 12 years old, my mom bought me a pair of drumsticks and a drum pad. She was a single mom on welfare, and we lived in an apartment, so I could not play anything loud anyway, but I longed for the rock and roll drummer life. At that time, a drum pad was not the drum kit and the lighted stage I was envisioning, so I got frustrated and never practiced much and did nothing with it. So instead, I ran the sound and lights for neighborhood bands. Anyway, after my kids grew up, I decided to go for it. I just do it for my internal well-being. My body may not love it. My wrists hurt after an hour or so, but aspirin and some rest makes it go away. And anyway, I'm happy to play when I can't. And uh, he sent an email of his kit here, which is a Yamaha Birch Absolute Custom with Yamaha hardware and Sabian cymbals. It says he likes the sound of the Birch and the Sabian HHX uh, cymbals are good sounding crashes. Well, Mark, thanks a lot for sending your email. And uh, you've got a similar story to a lot of people, you know, who are either moving into homes or getting to the point in their life where uh, they have the means or time or whatever, or looking for a new hobby, maybe, uh, pick up the drums. A lot of people are sending me emails who have, you know, moved into 
houses and they were, are finally able to get a set of drums for themselves, whether it be acoustic or electric drum kit. And doing it for your own internal well-being, I think that's probably one of the best, if not the best reason for playing drums in the first place. Uh, so I appreciate your email and sharing that with us, Mark. And thanks to everyone who's uh, taken the PodTrack survey that's on Unirunner.com. Uh, there's, I've gotten just a myriad of feedback all across the board, so, but some of the things I heard over and over again had to do with the sound quality, so I hope uh, with the, this lavalier microphone that I'm using today that's an improvement, let me know, you know what you think. Uh, I have about three ways to record right now through a lavalier, through the drum kit mics, which I didn't use today just to see how it would sound through the lavalier, and then also through the the uh, just the microphone on the camcorder which is probably the least ideal but uh, appreciate that feedback and that Podrack survey has anonymously let me know um, you know some of the ideas and concepts and I thoughts that you have as you watch the podcast so I appreciate that so if you want to visit unirunner.com feel free you can make comments also last week Terry uh, made a comment about the transcription of the intro to rock and roll which I wrote out for Led Zeppelin he had a much easier simple way to do it which had to do with uh, starting on the and of three in a measure rather than throwing in a measure of seven eight and uh, two four like I did uh, he was uh, always had it in his mind where he started transcribing it as he said on the and of three where I always in my mind envisioned it starting on the one so you can check that out and add to the comments on the website too if you have comments about anything I've talked about today. So thanks again and until next week take care, keep practicing, and God bless.